In this video, I want to cover the ReadyMade RC Recruit version 2. I've been looking for a small, compact FPV wing, and this looks to be a winner. Now, I've never flown this or assembled it, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. Let me state that the Recruit V2 is $84.99 on ReadyMade RC site. That's unbelievable if you ask me. I'll show you some of the components just so you guys can see everything that comes with it. And this is the plug and play version, so we're going to assemble it. We'll have to bring our own receiver, transmitter, and battery. Little assembly sheet, pretty straightforward it looks like. I'm going to set that aside. We have decals here. I don't really care for those. I think just having the wing black by itself is going to look pretty cool. Foam winglets. They also provide some nice CNC wooden winglets. Those are pretty clean. And then we have multiple nose cone versions depending on what type of camera you have. This looks like the uh, Hero Session camera. And initially I'm not gonna fly it with any sort of camera or FPV gear. So I'll need to get the CG straight. I wanna get familiar with how it flies and then we'll get into setting up FPV. Two tri-blade props, this uh, wing spar. See left and right wing with servos already installed. Skid plate to go underneath our fuselage. Fit on one way or another. Looks like we'll just glue that on. Then the main component. In this bay, the Recruit comes with gyro stabilization. That's pretty amazing. So you can see here will be our connections for our ailerons, the left and right, and then our inputs for throttle, aileron elevator. And then we also have a mode switch that we're gonna send into this. I believe it's this green one. The mode will allow us to do 2D stabilization. So that will be full stabilization. You won't be able to do any acrobatic flight. And then 3D stabilization, from what I've read on the site, will just sort of dampen uh, some of the wind and turbulence effects to help keep it stable, but still allow you uh, to loop and roll. All of this comes pre-installed mounted you can see we have a nice uh, battery mount with velcro all of that was already put together which is great and see how the magnets work there's our nose cone as well as our cover for the main compartment so i'll just put that on you can see that'll just snap right into place with these magnets as well and then we have our 2300 kV 2206 motor. Nice motor for this wing. I'm going to be running, I believe, a 2200 milliamp hour 3S LiPo. The thing I'll do is I'll take this wing spar. We can just feed it through here and it'll go all the way. I'll make sure that my ESC throttle cables are beneath that. Go ahead and put the right wing in place. Let me also mention that what's really cool is there is this nice cutout for an FPV camera, depending on what you use. This is my Luminaire CM650. See that just slides right down. We can run the cable into the main compartment and be good to go. So love just these little features on this wing uh, that makes sim assembly easy as well as a clean looking setup. Servo connections are clearly labeled. That says aileron right. So what I'll do is I'll feed this right wing into the spar. You can see that square cut out we'll bring it in a little bit and then there's this little hole here where I can feed my servo connection through slide that down in make sure that I don't pinch that cable go ahead and just pull it through mash that all the way in and we'll do the same for the left wing I've attached both wings now we'll have to screw those in but see my servo cables go underneath this main spar and on our little gyro board, you can see aileron left and aileron right. So we're going to basically take the aileron left label. We'll put it, in, plug it into the aileron left connector and the same for aileron right. Those are plugged in. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this gyro is mounted on a piece of foam, which is good just to uh, eliminate any sort of vibrations coming into the board. So once again, that came pre-installed, that's great. Now we'll make sure our wings are secure. It comes with these two plastic headed screws. We'll just feed those into this center hole and there's a thread embedded in the wing. Go ahead and get that all the way in, nice and tight. And that should be secure. Once again, remember there's a spar in the back, this thread up front. 
so I don't envision uh, having any problems with the wings coming loose. Two wings are mounted nice and secure. I imagine you could put some thread locker on these guys if you want to make it semi-permanent. Those are there so you can easily disassemble this wing. It's only I believe 35 to 36 inches wide. For my cases I don't ever see a need to disassemble it. Next I'll do the winglets. It comes with four screws. Looks like wood screws here. You can see on this end we'll be screwing into those and then for the winglets there are holes there and they're recessed a little bit so that we'll just be able to put that on. The winglets installed two screws in there I'm actually impressed with how well everything lined up sometimes as you guys know uh, you have to sort of make your own holes or make adjustments and lastly we'll glue our skid plate in place probably you just use some of this goop and get a nice tight bond I like how this plate does overlap uh, this seam from the nose cone just so nothing can get hung up in there our skid plate is glued in place you can see this thing is looking really clean right now and I'll just go ahead and put on our nose comb. One thing I failed to mention is included in this you get different types of mounts for your main camera so you'll be able to just put that right in front here mount your camera inside you can see there's straps a lot of just attention to detail and parts that come with this $85 build so I'm really impressed now that we pretty much have all of the assembly out of the way I'm going to go ahead and wire this up with my free sky tyrannus using the v8r7 we'll just have basically three main channels throttle uh, our aileron left and right and the mode switch I did fail to mention that the gyro actually takes care of mixing and all of that so all we need to do is provided our inputs not worry about the tyrannus uh, setting our weights and all of that this will happen within the main board. I've covered binding this receiver in the past, but I'll go ahead and just do it again so we have it here with this build. See, I have uh, signal pins one and two jumpered. And then what I've gone ahead and done is unplugged the throttle or the ESC from the main gyro board. And I'll go ahead and just plug it into uh, channel three here on the receiver. That's just so we can get power to it. So that's plugged in. I will go ahead and connect the battery. We have a constant red LED, which means we're not currently bound to the transmitter. We are in bind mode. I'll go ahead and go in here and I'm going to create a new model. I won't go through the naming right now. And then I'm going to scroll up to our mode. We want a D8 mode, not the D16. I'll hit enter. Then we'll go down and hit bind. We can see that receiver's blinking, so the binding has been set up. I'll go ahead and hit enter, exit, and then power down and remove the jumper from this receiver. So let's talk briefly about wiring. It's pretty straightforward. On the right are our outputs that we already connected, throttle, our ESC, aileron right and left. So inputs are going to come in, that mixing and stabilization will happen, outputs to the different control surfaces as well as the throttle. Then on my left, we just did the bind with this V8R. You can see channel one, two, three, and then I've skipped four and used five for the mode. So from one, this yellow, we have our throttle that's going into the throttle on the board. These are all clearly labeled. Then we have white, which then goes to our ailerons, elevator, then once again four is rudder. I've skipped that. We could put mode on rudder since we're not using that channel. I just like to keep it clean. And if you recall, depending on your Tyrannus firmware, it's T-A-E-R, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. And once again, mode switch will be the green. So let me go ahead and power up before we set up our modes and let's see how it behaves. I have my Tyrannus powered up. I'm going to go ahead and give power to the board. So we're giving power to the board. We got throttle, that's good. And then let me just see our surfaces are working correctly. You can see that when I go left, got that left elevon coming up and right, right elevon. So that looks good. You, might be able to see the blinking red LED. 
on the board, that means there is no stabilization or any assistance happening right now just because we haven't set up that mode switch. So we could technically go out and fly in full manual mode. Now the range on these surfaces is pretty far so, uh, so we'd have to be careful about that. So now let's go ahead and set up the mode switch. Okay, what I'll do is I'll go into my menu and go over to our mixer. I'm going to set up channel five and I'll go ahead and set it up on this left three-way switch because uh, my right is broken. I need to get that replaced. So I'm just going to go to source and then I'm going to toggle the switch. Actually, you can see that the board is changing. We have a blue when that's all the way forward. Middle is our default mode of no stabilization and then up. Looks like we're in, I believe they call it 3D or acro mode. So in the middle, default, up, we have our 2D, they call it, they also refer to it as takeoff mode. And then all the way towards us is 3D mode. For those that are visual like me, you can see our channel five I'll look at that, that's a minus 100. And we have blue for our takeoff 2D mode. Zero on this bar is just our default uh, manual mode. And then all the way up, or plus 100, is our 3D mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in takeoff mode. And I'm gonna pick this wing up as I roll back and forth for pitch up, pitch down. Looks like the wing is making the proper adjustments to keep us stable. Now let me toggle into 3D mode. To be honest, it's hard to tell a difference on the bench. So we'll have to figure that out in the air. That's the easiest flight mode switch setup that I've definitely ever done. We'll go ahead and get things cleaned up in the compartment and we should be ready to go. Out at the field, ready for the maiden. One thing I want to mention is I had to reverse uh, my elevator input just so that the uh, Elevons would respond in the right direction. I'll check throttle. <laughs> Looks good. Then I'm going to toggle into takeoff mode, that 2D mode. You can see that it's going to hopefully give the right amount of pitch so that we can get up in the air. There is a bit of wind out. I'm going to take off into the wind, maybe die, let it die down just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's pretty awesome. We're in 2D mode, the takeoff mode. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me bring it around. Jeez, uh, the stability is pretty incredible. And just keep it nice and stable in this wind. Do a little just fly by. Really easy on the throttle right now. See, I'm just barely, probably at about 15, 20%. Get it up just so I make sure I don't run into a tree. Come back around. But this 2D stabilization is really not letting me do any sort of roll. Alright, so I'm still in 2D mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bank hard to the right as hard as I can. You can see that it's not going to let me roll this all the way over, which is great. I mean, it's great for practicing, getting comfortable with this wing. Uh, it handles very well so far. And let me just get a head-on direct shot into the wind. I'm gonna take my hands off the sticks. It's just going straight ahead. You can see it kind of rolling back and forth to just combat the wind. Bring it back around. So you guys can see it. Look at it just fighting that wind. Okay, so what I'll do on this next pass, I'm going to bring the switch into the middle mode, the standard mode. Now we're, now we're in full manual. You can see how just squirrely it is. And once again, there's no mixing or anything, so I gotta be careful here. Um, this thing will completely just get away from me. So I'll do another pass. And this time I'm gonna kick into 3D mode just so we can kind of gauge the difference. So that'll be all the way forward on my switch. So now you can see we're in 3D mode, very, very agile, a lot of turning. I didn't want to stay there too long. I started heading for the trees. I would highly advise, for more experienced guys, you know, you can get into 3D even manual mode. It's a bit of work to do all of 
uh, this filming and flying, but uh, if you're new to wings and you want to give this a test, make sure you stay in 2D mode. This thing is super responsive. You know, you don't want to put all your hard-earned money and work into your first flight just to have it crash. So, thing has a lot of throttle. I'm going to do another pass. Just one more full throttle. Golly. Swing is really unbelievable. Definitely having a lot of fun flying this so far. So I'll just bring it in for a landing. I'm in 2D mode. This grass is great for uh, being able to just glide it on in. I'm gonna cut throttle right about now. Just let it ease on in. That's awesome. This is really a great little wing. Super fun to fly. 2D mode makes it real easy to get familiar with the controls. The Recruit V2 Maiden, a little bit of wind, and working the camera and trying to fly is definitely a challenge, but I'll do an upcoming video that shows the FPV gear. Let me just recap the takeoff process just so you guys know. If you're all the way forward, that's how I have my Tyrannus configured. That's going to be stabilized 2D mode. That's gonna give you assistance while you take off and while you fly. Your center stick position here is manual mode, and then all the way up is 3D mode. So definitely we'll get into some more 3D flight in the future. Highly recommended, especially for the price. Definitely look forward to uh, flying this some more and sharing what I learned. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.